Nate Bahar, welcome to the It's Not That Deep podcast, brother. Uh, thanks for having me, man. I'm excited. Dude, we've been talking about doing this for a long time, but here we are, finally, mm -hmm. in the new studio. Yep. Thank you for coming through, my man. Um, for those who don't know, you're a pro uh, wide receiver for the Ottawa Red Blacks. Uh, you are the CEO and founder of the Firework app. Uh, you're a friend, uh, your client, and you know, a brother. I consider you a brother, man. Yeah, you're man. good people. You're uh, good people. I appreciate that. You're pretty good yourself. Uh, thanks, bro. <laughs> uh, great to have you on the pod, man. It's 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 crazy. I almost didn't know where to start this one, but it's like because you're just such a you're a guy with a lot of different interests, eclectic interests. <laughs> As I've gotten to know you, you know, you're not just CFL player Nate Bahar. That's what the world knows you as. That's what you know is like the kind of that's the main flex, mm -hmm. you know, that's what like if someone on the surface level gets to see you and, and know you, it's like, oh, yeah, that, that football player guy, big mm -hmm. arms, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you're you're a lot more than that. And, and I'm hoping that we get to dive into some of that today. Let's do it. Let's talk about your story from the beginning, man. Um, you were you raised in London, Ontario. That's right. Yeah. Talk um, about that a bit, man. What was that like? And what got you into <laughs> football? Oh, man. Um football 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 yeah i uh so i was raised in london um my mom my brother and i my dad was in toronto um but my dad grew up in south florida jamaican born grew up in south florida so he was always you know let's get him into sports early i think he uh he wasn't nearly as good at sports as i think he you know would, would have wished he was <laughs> so i think he wanted to try to push that on he was strong as an ox that dude uh you know, he lifted a whole bunch of weights and all that stuff back there but he knew he wanted to get me into sports early um i think my mom sort of single mom um with my brother and my older brother um, was like, hey, this kid's got way too much energy. What are we going to put him in? Yeah. Um, I took to football. So I think I started when I was six or seven. I remember I started and I was like legally too young to play. <laughs> but everybody was just like, ah, yeah, he's good. Get him, him in yeah. tight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, scored my first ever touch. Kick return touchdown. Ooh. And my best friend of the team got a holding penalty and I cried because I thought he did it on purpose. Oh, my so God. That's the, that's like, the origin no, I can't, story. Can't, can't let him have that shine. <laughs> that's the chip on your shoulder. Eh? It's exactly. been carrying you ever since. Like, how oh, that's supposed to be my dog, Exactly. Bro. Exactly. Uh, so that, that's London. Yeah. That's too funny, man. So grew up playing football. Uh, for those who don't know, you played at Carlton U for the Ravens as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, were you wide receiver the whole time or? Do you ever bounce around different positions or? Yeah, high school. Um, I actually played running back up until um, grade 11, I want to say. For my first year ever playing receiver, I think it was grade 11, grade 12. Okay. So I was always a running back, um, but I was like absurdly small and skinny. Um, like I got to high school and I think my freshman year I was, I think I've, I started the season under 100 pounds. I think it would have been like 98 pounds or something like that. So I was tiny. I um, was always just a quick little like shifty guy yeah like a little short little slender man just running around um <laughs> and then played quarterback grade 10 grade 11 a little bit um and then yeah so transitioned over to receiver and then yeah got to carlton um 20 whatever that was 13 14 um and then yeah it's just been receiver ever since nice man what was that transition from like london to ottawa like um city wise it was great um you know <laughs> london I started going to the bars in London probably end of grade 12 and yeah. I did my fifth year there too. So, you know, the three bars people go to were not played out by any stretch. I still had a lot. There's still some <laughs> gas in the tank, but, you know, they were already getting a little, a little, a little old. So getting to Ottawa was great in terms of, um, you know, living experience and also just getting into a university setting with, you know, friends and people and, you know, girls and all the fun stuff that you get when you, when you come in. And then football wise was interesting. Like right. it was a super unique experience. Um, we didn't have a team before that like my recruiting right. class my recruiting class started the program back so um had that sort of extra layer of so did you start as a freshman yeah okay so it came right when oh that's yeah. good timing man. yeah yeah so that was why i came here i was yeah. you know i was um the number one rated receiver coming out of um across canada out, out of high school um and chose carlton because i wanted to you know do something that mattered like yes yeah. i remember i met with coach samara um he came to my he came to my place. I forgot I had a meeting with him actually. Was, you know, after a big game in high school, September grade thirteen, um, this bald dude walks up to me with this with a stupid hat I didn't even recognize the logo of. He's like, "Hey, it's Coach Samara from Carlton," and I was like, "Okay." okay. He's like, "We're meeting tonight, right?" I was like, "Oh yeah." I, just, I was like, "I actually work till nine. He's like, "Cool, I'll come over after." I was like that's a little invasive, uh, but then he comes over because he's 
Samara, anybody that knows him, like he's he that, could, that's just how he is. Oh, he could sell that's anything he to anybody. He's just, mm-hmm. just a salesman. So he comes over. I always live on my own, but I was like, hey, I'll meet you at my mom's because I was like, I'm not bringing you to my you know little trap that I had when I was, <laughs> when I was you know 18. Um, so I went over to my mom's, let her know. She stayed up for like 45 minutes with us. That was like, you guys are psycho, and we stayed up till like midnight just talking, drawing, like doing every everything. And then I kind of knew like right away. I was like, I don't know who the hell or what the hell Ottawa is or this school or Carleton, but like there's something there. Um, went on a visit. The visit was crazy. Um, like just absolutely played to my 18 year old mm. egomaniac self. I I showed up to the facility, um, got off the plane. They they drove me in a nice car. Uh, I get out, walk into the athletic facility, and every staff member. They showed you that Hollywood. Oh, every staff member is wearing a shirt that says Ravens heart number 11 Bahar, like the, oh like the, God. I love New York. Um, That's so shirts. funny. And yeah, and posters covering, you know, Florida wall, Florida Damn. ceiling that's, through all of athletics. Actually props to, I mean, I went to Ottawa with you, so we know yeah. it's a better school. Anyway. But, <laughs> but props to that recruitment. Like that is dedication. Yeah. That we got to get this guy. Yeah. It was, it was pretty hilarious. I found out a few years later that it was, uh, it was actually Jen Brennan, I think our athletic director that kind of like spearheaded it. Like, we need, we, got, we need we a splash. Like we need a splash. We need some crazy whatever it was was. And I'm not gonna say that it was, you know, the t shirts that won me over, but because then I met with the coaching staff and everything yeah, yeah, like yeah. that was great. But yeah, man, first year, um bunch of 18 year olds trying to play against grown men. Our first game ever was against Western, who was like oh, the man. number one team in the country. Um and they hated me because they thought I spurned them by, by leaving. Burn. Yeah. But please please uh please divulge what does this mean? <laughs> you know, like burn them, um, rejected them sort of oh thing. Yeah, sorry, I dug into the bag for that one. I, I'm I'm dead, man. That's too funny. <laughs> that, were there a lot of other schools that were like trying to get you? I mean, number one wide receiver at the mm-hmm. time, like you probably had your pick in, in Canada at least, but like were there anywhere down in the States that you were thinking of, like mm-hmm. making that jump? Um yeah, so I mean every every uh school across Canada had, had reached out. Um at some point or another, um, I pretty much had it down to it was either going to be Western. I, I, it eventually got to a point where I was like, it's either going to be Western or I'm going to go down the South. Um, and then m- most of what I knew about going, getting down South, I didn't want to pay any of the recruiting people. There's a lot of people who can help you get down there, but right. usually they take a little bit of money or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, I wasn't really down for that. Um, and then it kind of got to the 11th hour where it was like, okay, shoot, I'm deciding between. And then Got some knocks and some bites from from some places down there. Um, had some people who sort of made some connections. But I remember talking to my dad one time, and he was like, "Look, we can either restart this whole process, force it down there, probably have to go to a prep school and prep stuff. School, I hadn't yeah. done my SATs and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Yeah. And I was like, I remember looking at him, and he was like, "Or you could just yeah." He's like, Bo-. and I remember the exact thing we said. He's he like, "Boogie, if you do what you're supposed to do and grow as a player like you're going to, you could be in freaking China and the NFL will find you or the CFL will find you. Like, it, it doesn't matter. If you're good enough, yeah. they have enough money to find you. So I was like, yeah, let's just do it. Let's stay here. We Boom. built we built our, you know, my name here and stuff. Let's go. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I actually love that. I love that kind of arc uh, that, that like kind of, you know, you going through this football career, like, and, and that leading you to Ottawa, which is actually where you play now. Mm-hmm. But before that, so you drafted fifth overall uh, to the, then Edmonton Eskimos, mm-hmm. now the the Elks, um, and what was what was that whole process like, man? Break that down, like going from uni, head full mm-hmm. of steam, crushing it, to like, all right, now it's time for the big leagues. Um, yeah, I mean the whole the whole process with Edmonton was just uh, let's call it chaotic to say, <laughs> to say the least. Um, draft process was cool, you know, trained for the draft in down in Brayden, Florida at IMG, um, went really well, was feeling good, um, got to the combine. I actually, I think I pretty severely underperformed the combine from what I knew I could do. Um, I don't know what the hell I did the night before. Or whatever. <laughs> I just remember being like these, I, I'm not running today. I'm not running well. Mm. Um, but combine stuff went well, you know, did decent in the drills, uh, moves away, all the good stuff. Then, you know, my agent was actually talking to me the week leading up to it. And he's like, look, man, eight of nine teams have called me, communicated with me, figured out sort of con- loose contract stuff if they were to pick you. Um, we know you're not going past nine. Um, no matter like we know you're not going past nine pretty much no matter what um so we're likely to be you know first round etc um and i was like who's the team that hasn't he's like edmonton and i was like why he's like oh, the new gm we got a new gm i think he's just kind of like not in over his head but he was sorting things out he just just took in the role um a month or so before the, before the draft and i'm like okay well 
Edmonton also had a bunch of studs at receiver. I was like, there's no way. There's no way they're, they're taking me. But I did know him. I knew him well because he used to be the assistant GM mm-hmm. of Ottawa. Okay. And I helped out with the team a lot. You know, training camps was always, you know, I'd go around as the equipment guy and help out and it's a great little summer gig and make some money to be around football. So then the day comes, um, my head coach from university actually called me. He's like, hey, Nate, um, he's like, I think Brock's, I think Brock's taking you. I think you're going to go at five. I'm like, Steve, like, so coach, there's no, there's no, there's no way. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's like, no, nah, I think so. I was like, all right, well, we'll see. Um, third pick goes up on the screen. My phone rings. Whereas we're at a, actually at hometown here. Um, big group of us, and you know, there's probably 20, 30 of us, and they have the, nice. the draft on the on the uh, little thing. draft party. Yeah, yeah it was that. cool. Yeah, yeah. Phone rings. Um, Brock, hey, you want to be an Edmonton football player? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome, cool, cool, cool. Celebrate, lovely, fun time. Pop champagne, cigars. Everything's good. Morning, I get a call from my agent. Hey, man congratulations i hope you enjoy uh, and feels good i need to let you know straight up this is going to be a battle i was like what are you talking about he's like he still hasn't reached out to me still hasn't talked to me still doesn't communicate with me nothing Damn. i'm like what does that mean he's like i this isn't normal this <laughs> means that this is going to be a negotiation and a half so we're going to wait it out we're going to see he's like do you trust me it's like yeah i trust you let's go i got a bunch of guys that he represented john was known as a hard ass he'd had some issues he'd had some holdouts before with gms but it's just because a lot of agents in the cfl are just willing to take whatever because it's like not like not like there's a difference between you know the three million dollar contract and the 60. yeah you know we're talking thousands of dollars to, yeah you know five figures sometimes so they're of, just like take it, man. Exactly. Like, they don't care because they're cut i mean they're it's not incentivized smaller. as much mm-hmm. as like an nfl agent where it's like hey man we're gonna do what's absolutely in your best interest yes. we're gonna get you that extra 20 m's mm-hmm. which means i'm gonna get myself yeah <laughs> yeah you know but, yeah yeah okay yeah. i get it exactly that and then weeks went by no contact another week went by another week went by another week went by we're like Jeez. six weeks away from training camp Dude, like, what was your headspace like during that man like well it was uh fine at the start because i was like hey we're good and then the first offer came in and it was just obviously under yeah, like yeah, way yeah. under which yeah. is john calls me hey this is what we expected don't yeah. worry he counters probably a little a little bit higher than we but i mean brock's using the lowest uh <laughs> example of a fifth overall pick yeah we're using Closer to the highest example of a throw pick. Mm. Expectation is we're going to meet in the middle like grown adults and everyone's yeah. going to keep it moving, keep it copacetic. Uh, nope. No response. Gee, no like response. That, Here's our offer. Take it or leave it. Sorry, what? And then nothing, nothing, nothing. John goes, hey, do you trust me? Yes. Okay. He goes, okay. Stick with me. Then the GM starts leaking information to reporters. So I'm seeing reports and getting texts from people because now training camp has, has started. I'm I'm now the holdout guy. I'm the only guy in the league who's holding out. Uh, and and uh, to give people a little bit of context, like during this time, publicly, you're being bashed. Oh, yeah. Like and people are thinking it's a you thing. Absolutely. It's like, it's oh, it's Nate who's doing all this. Yes. Oh, but you're, you're just you're just playing the game, man. Like you're just doing what you actually are supposed to be doing right now. And you're taking the advice of your actual agent. Yeah, exactly. And then they're leaking info to press that I'm uh, I'm asking for, you know, sixty, seventy thousand dollars signing board. All, all this stuff that's just um, unless that's, there's an email chain. I wasn't on. Oh, yeah, it was big, it dirty. was not cute. So then I'd see, like you said, I'm getting bashed. People are telling me they hope I blow my knees out, all that stuff. So. That whole long-winded story to say that transition was uglier than I would have liked. You know, I was so ready to just jump in and play football. Yeah. Learn. Like, it was such a dope receiving core to just go in and send, spend a training camp with, you know, get coached up by guys who are all going to be, you know, CFL Hall of Famers, guys that are still in the NFL right now. Brent Zilly just uh, scored a tug last week for the Panthers. Mm-hmm. Like, these are all my guys um, that I was going to get to learn from. And, That's kind of taken from me, bro. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. And then so I get there week one and, like, anybody knows pro sports. Training camp, everybody gets reps. It's like, go, go, go. It's all learned. Same reps for the ones as it is for the threes as it is for the equipment manager. Everyone's getting the same amount of work. Week one comes, all politics. Literally. Well, week, all... week one, it comes and it's just all game planning. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, here are the five guys playing. They get all the reps. Only time somebody else goes in is just to, you know, take a clear out for them so they don't have to run a 40-yard dash for no reason. So there's literally no development. It's just like you show up and go. So rookie year essentially just wasted, to be honest, which really was, really was annoying. Um, but hey. That's all right. And so what's going through your head during this year? Like, yo, do you do you ever think like, man, you know what? Forget about all this football stuff, this, that, and the other. Or or were you just like, nah, you know what? Like, let's see where this goes. Like next year is gonna be better. Like mm-hmm. where where are you at like during that that first year? 
Um, no, I way too way. Well, I watch way too many Jordan commercials to just give up. <laughs> I mean, every single every single time something doesn't go your way, you're you're thinking of the. Like, nah, nah, yeah, we good. Exactly. This look, is... look me in the eyes. Yeah, it's okay if you're scared. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. It's you're just... scared of what I won't become, and I'm scared of what I. Yeah, whatever it is. So, um, yeah, that's too funny, man. No, nah, so just put in, just put in the work and do it. You know, as long as I stayed healthy and did what I could do, that you know. Um, who I was as a player was going to come out at some point, and that's always going to win over as long as I stuck with it. So it wasn't too bad, really. Um, getting paid to play a sport, I was getting paid to wear spandex and run around. <laughs> like it's, you know, it's you're pretty much a, it's pretty much a Avenger at that point. When you think about it. Hey, man. I mean, me growing up playing football, obviously not to anywhere near the same level or anything like that. But like, I just, I really do know how, what that feels like, mm-hmm. and it's like you know, growing up, you're just like, oh yeah, like getting paid to do this man that would be the best thing in the world like yeah you know i dislocate my shoulder and yeah. put it back in like mm-hmm. who needs that you know but um you know as as you've uh you know we'll definitely get into the rest of your career as well but like you've you've dealt with some injuries as well man or what's that kind of been like for you um yeah i think they're just like it's just such a part of the game mm. that i don't know i don't know if i have anything like um not like what's the like, word like career ending yeah career i mean ending. i almost i almost uh fractured my spine that was that was a crazy one the going into the x-ray machine because there was like something wrong up here and i couldn't move my neck after trying to make a this is also why i don't play defense or try to make tackles <laughs> after that game i don't know if they put me back on kickoff because i made one tackle on kickoff in the pros and i almost died so oh, that's too funny, <laughs> it's man. we call that kyp in uh sports which means know your personnel uh, and we, uh, we learned the personnel which is <laughs> The the dude wearing the pink corduroy jacket on the screen right now is not the type to run down and try to make tackles on kickoffs. So oh, man. Uh, that one was bad, but you know that's too funny, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, in terms of like like just talking about that for a second, like just the sport of football itself, man. Like just the nature of it, bro. It mm-hmm. is so. It's like actually like I'm surprised it's still legal in, <laughs> in many ways, right? Like yeah. it's it's changed so much from when I played as well. Like there's no Oklahoma drill anymore. Mm-hmm. People are ba- barely doing full tilt practices and stuff like that. And then knowing like all that side of the game, which is, you know, obviously the elephant in the room is always CTE mm-hmm. and stuff like that, right? Um, do you do you dwell and think about this stuff as a pro athlete or, or do you just kind of just take it as like this is what i'm doing right now and like like i'm just gonna ride this out um i think i'm uniquely positioned based on my position and also just like a pretty fortunate and lucky career i've had good thing this is live edgewood <laughs> um is um that I, I i haven't felt much or haven't done much to to my head um it's something i definitely think about with my teammates especially guys i play with the university and stuff guys i've seen get conked and then like yeah shrug the trainer off and like puke in the, puke in the garbage bin but then look yeah. at you and be like Shh, don't if you say anything yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, okay. ah, like you know because there's guys that i love that like i'm like Oof, i hope that you're who you are in 30 years um and then yeah, I mean football. Like more of the issue to me is the politics of football. To be mm. honest, especially at this level, like that's the yeah. one. Those are the ones that, that keep me up at night, and just like the antiquated ways that people still go about doing things. And like when you got grown men yelling at other grown men, it was twenty twenty one. Like, bro, you know that we don't respond. Like, yeah, just like that's not the way to get us to do what you want us at, to do at all. And you get your fake, you get your fake champion heroes who think that they're given the, you know, they think they're given the three hundred battle cry speech. Yeah, the before rah, they, rah, uh, yeah. like yeah, it's like yeah, man, that shit kills me. It, it's that <laughs> stuff. It's not even the actual sport itself. You, you would you say still that you still actually got like the same love and passion for the sport, and mm-hmm. does that part has changed, or like would you say that like being a professional kind of changes your view? And it's not the mm-hmm. same as, as as being like that young. Buck yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know. Oh, it absolutely changes yeah. your view. Anybody who no, I shouldn't say anybody. That's not fair. I would say I would posture to say that you know a lot of people who do the sis boom raw this is my life ah, football's life at the pro level um are either just they're just wired different like <laughs> truly to see to see that way because it's so hard when you see how business like it is um you see that they just 
very literally treat you like you know like a meat market you're just a like, like you're at a meat market i should say yeah. um you're, you're kind of a pawn yeah, in, oh, in, in, in a yeah. weird way like you know you're just a pawn in this game and it's yeah. it, it's very much i, I equate it to chess in, in yeah. a lot of ways football especially mm -hmm. right because it's such a it's such a team sport that's reliant on so many moving pieces mm -hmm. at an organizational level but then it is the players that are actually making it happen at the end of the day right yeah and but then when you got the coaches the gms and this and the investors and, da, 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 and it's just so many levels of like people's interest yep and and it it gets it can get nasty even mm -hmm. outside looking in and even you know having the pleasure of working with you uh, for the past few months and just getting to kind of see like you know what it's like behind the scenes of a, of a pro athlete mm -hmm. it's kind of it's kind of crazy to see that like oh game day like going out under the lights like that's the fun part and that's oh, all yeah. great and but there's just so much more to it man mm -hmm. it is beyond a full-time job yeah absolutely and i think that that's what's that's what begins to weigh on guys as you go i think uh, a lot of a lot of footballers, especially um in a league that just straight up underpays their players like the cfl like there's this sort of bitterness that sort of rises in a lot of guys because it's just like hell I, these rules would feel great if my bank account had an extra decimal place or an extra, yeah. com an extra comma, I should say. Um, but it, it's just tough, right? And it's no one person's fault, no one rule's fault. Like you said, it's just this becomes this big beast and this big machine. And when, you know, winning is the end goal, which it should be in sports, but winning is sort of the only thing, it's the only way for not just you to keep your job, but your positional coach and your offense coordinator uh -huh. and your head coach and your GM and yada, yada, yada. it's like, a lot of unspoken tension unspoken tension and like an almost an inability for it to be about the human because mm. if you get you know emotional connections to your quarterback and your quarterback starts to fall apart um or he loses a leg and you try yeah. to put him out there with a prosthetic on and he can't do it because yeah. you or you feel for you love yeah. the guy it just can't happen so there's just sort of this um this detachment from the personal from the human um and i don't think that's unique to football i think that's sort of all pro sports yeah because the inverse of that is college where it's like you show up with a recruiting class yeah. and 90 percent of you 80 percent of you it's are going to be there for yeah. year four and five and your coach needs to know you and, yeah. and have this respect and love for you because you show up at 17 18 19 like a dumbass yeah. like you're an idiot and he knows yeah. you're gonna be an idiot yeah. but he needs to you know build this relationship with you to yeah. turn you into the man that can win him a vanier mm. or they can get him you know to to the college football playoff or whatever Those you know whatever you are yeah. exactly so it's like there's just this inherent difference in how and again even that is still spawned by winning. Like a coach knows he needs to build a relationship with you because at the end of the day, he needs to win to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it is still, it's by the same thing, but it's just pro sports, you don't have time to develop. It's just, oh, no, you can't do it. All One right. of my favorite quotes on this podcast of all times from your teammate, Sherrod Baltimore, who broke it down in such an eloquent Sherrod way, where he was like, it's a business. Yep. And like those three words like stuck with me so much when it comes to sports because we lose sight of that. Everyone knows it's a business. Everyone knows it's a for-profit entity and blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. We kind of lose that. And we kind of think that it's this fairy, like, you know, we've got to treat everyone really nice. Yeah, and, yeah, you yeah. know, concussion protocol, yeah, this, that, and the yeah. other thing. It's like, man, like, can you go? Mm -hmm. Like, we need you. And if you can't go... What, what are you gonna do with you like you mm -hmm. can't pay you we can't do this we can't do that like mm -hmm. so it's like that anxiety alone must impact a lot of players oh my god performance and their personal life and their mental health and like it's it's probably something that's like especially in a sport like football and like you mm -hmm. know big team sports where it's like big macho guys supposed yeah, yeah. to keep their like you know emotions kind of in check it's probably weighs heavy on dudes, man. Right? Man, over my over my four years, like I've seen the best players get injured. I've seen the lowliest practice roster guys who were never supposed to crack. Like I've seen everybody get injured, et cetera. And like when someone's on the sixth game, you know, they're not active. They're not allowed to be active for the sixth game. They're on the injured, the IR, they call it the NFL. Um, sixth game meaning, yeah, they're, they're off. Um, you can just see it weighing on them, man. They have to come in every day just get treatment and like yeah, just man. motor along then we're at practice and they're like on the sideline going through little footwork or whatever and you just you just see it the difference between them <clears throat> week one of that they just come in with an injury all this all this optimism ah no i'm gonna get together we're gonna be all right yeah i'm gonna get it back and then week five and you're like oh you're like 
sunken eyes like <laughs> look like a just, shell of themselves you're just kind of bumming me out just being you know, there yeah bro. seriously in your hoodie just like seriously like good route nate like, yeah god damn and the, the, i wish you were out here <laughs> what do you want me to do <laughs> and the ones who can keep it together though and like keep that positive energy uh like those are the best teammates and it's that's not to say that the ones who find it hard no, or bad just, teammates it's yeah, just, just like going through it yeah I mean, it's really, tough really and like honestly again like on a way smaller scale mm -hmm. right but like when i played i was a band-aid i was mm -hmm. i was injured so there was always something like i had bare dislocated shoulders mm -hmm. you know like pop it back in coach pull me back in that kind of, that kind of dumb yep. young energy which is just like we could just do a whole podcast about that let's yeah. not make it about that but the, i think the big thing there is like the identity and that's something I really want to talk to you about. It's mm -hmm. like the identity that you wrap your like around being an athlete and especially being one of the star players or like the captain mm -hmm. and just that and the other thing, being such a part of your team's success and everyone around you is kind of relying on you or you're a leader or something. Mm -hmm. You wrap your your identity and your self worth in being this athlete yep. that's, that's doing this job, that's doing it at a high level and what have you, right? what let's talk to me about that a little bit mm. like like the impact of like athletics not just football but particularly in football mm -hmm. uh, and and just everything mm -hmm. i think um this is in a nutshell like the biggest issue people have when they retire and move on is that you've gone your whole life um and i think this is only exacerbated when you um you know grow up in the south or grow up in a football you know football town or football state um it would be the same for it definitely is the same for you know um european football players yep. you grow up in south london and you know you eventually get to put on the the, the blue jersey of chelsea and yep. you gotta retire one day it's all the same it's that um everybody's usually um complimented you for one thing yeah and that's not a you know it's not in some malicious way but you know it's oh nate uh, like we're so excited oh where are you committing oh how many offers do you have yeah 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 oh it's great awesome hey nate we saw you in the paper for yeah. this way i didn't realize you had three times i see it yeah, even yeah. with your neighbors and yeah. stuff like that it's like that's what they're gonna talk to you yeah about. it's exactly. the and you don't blame them it's nope. the low-hanging fruit it's an easy thing to just be like ah, mm -hmm. I got mm -hmm. you. yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna do that you're gonna play that yeah yeah without a doubt and i mean that just i think over and over and over again throughout your whole life um it's it's tough for people to then see themselves differently you know because there's also especially you know to, to get into pro sports uh, to get to that level um there's a lot of self-talk a lot of positive self-talk not it's not that the self-talk is negative but you know you're staring yourself in the mirror before you go out there for a kickoff saying nice. saying i'm napal you're Nate. be napar yeah but who's napal napar is the best football player. <laughs> that's a big thing that you, you said right there you though, was like, who's napar yeah. yeah and then you identify yourself as this thing um i think one of the things that is set me free over the last uh few years has been being able to detach from that and realize that there's so much more to who i am um and i mine sort of came naturally it was sort of a natural progression of just things and dominoes falling in the in the real world that i feel incredibly fortunate because i genuinely do think and if there's a gm listening to this they probably are probably gonna try to kick me out of the building tomorrow if they hear it but that's okay because it doesn't impact the way i play um uh, but i genuinely think if football ended tomorrow for me i would keep on moving my life it does not define me by any stretch it's the my favorite is when like dbs or, or linebackers who played hamilton and they got a really mouthy dude over there who like just all he does is talk mess and like people talk shit people talk shit to me be like yo you suck you, you guys are ass i'll be like okay yeah i'm like i be like that's great man i <laughs> i would love to know what else you are yeah if this is the best thing you have to talk like i'm like mm. You call me ugly or something. At least that I can't change. But like, if yeah. I, I could hang up my cleats and still be better at what I want to do in life, then you probably are playing halfback or whatever the hell you could do. So it's like, it's tough for guys though. Um, Detaching for good reason. yourself, yeah, man, mm -hmm. because it becomes it really you you start to truly believe that this is who I am. Mm -hmm. This is my value to society. Yeah, this is like what I'm put here to do, and uh, you know, not to get all spiritual religious whatever but it's like you know like a lot of people will be like this is my calling yep this is my you know purpose my purpose and you know when that's taken away which yeah. for most players at one point or another even if mm -hmm. you you know somehow slipped through the cracks and had a a tom brady-esque yeah. career you know what i mean like you know Screw that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i'll let that one slide yeah, Dave, yeah, just yeah. for the purpose of that. <laughs> but uh but it, it uh you know, football just it has such an impact on on that. I'd say almost even more so than than a, a lot of other sports yeah. because of the brotherhood, the camaraderie, mm -hmm. and like kind of the 
the intent the 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 practices the grind it's almost like look don't it's it really is not this deep but like it's almost like war going to war with people yeah no no you know, with these brothers of mm-hmm. yours and like every game is like we got a battle and mm-hmm. like, it gets it gets like all like emotional rah, rah, and all that stuff and without you can, a doubt you can wrap yourself up in that even just the structure of it and the season right you spend six months doing nothing but picking up iron mm. on throwing it on your back just just prepping. destroying your nervous system yeah your joints and everything just to literally for that reason to go to war then you get with your teammates and the way they structure everything whether it's university or pro or, or you know or average level at any point it's like practices teammates nothing else exists wrap yourself up the only time anything else exists is when we let you off the hook to go take a 40 a Ciroc to the face with your boys and listen to some <laughs> listen to some hip hop music and try to kiss a girl for the first time in, in six days. Like whatever it is, like everything around it, it really is. It tries to pull you into this yeah. like cultish. This is all that yeah, matters. Ex- exactly. This is so, the only thing, yeah. And there's also something definitely to be said about um, the impact of like a physical sport. Like when it is something that physical to the, that whole thing, it's like you're also adding that layer. Like obviously you get really sore in basketball. Yeah. And yeah you get yeah. really sore in soccer and like, and baseball even like you yeah. twist all the time, whatever they do. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but football, it's uh. like, you know what it feels like with your teammate yeah. to wake up in the morning. You, oh yeah. You legit oh. can't move or like. And you reach for the tour and all this in your ba- thing and you pop one at 8 a.m. You're like, yeah. Oh God, please kick in, please kick in. And you know that all, you know, all 53 guys you dressed, or sorry, 43 guys you dressed with in that game woke up the exact same as you and they feel the same. You walk in the meetings all hungover the yeah. every game, you're like, eh, yeah, that meal. You yeah. got a McDonald's orange juice and a big ma- <laughs> and a McGriddle, and you're like, yeah, I know, coach, I fucking, I suck. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Right yeah. It's like, see what you did here? Like, yeah, I, I was there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do remember. Yeah, it was eight hours ago. I'm back already. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, and look, we can sit here talking forever about that, but that's kind of my big point. There is mm-hmm. like, you know, if any any young athletes or anyone's listening to this, like, you are more than an athlete, and and I know it's kind of been, you know, that message is getting a little bit more popular, and people are realizing that hey, like, you can you can do other things, and that kind of brings us to like the next topic that I really want to discuss with you, which is the tech company that you founded, yes. Firework. Let's talk about that, man, Mm -hmm. because it's really exciting, man. You 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 definitely are embodying what I just talked about more than an athlete. Um, you're doing something amazing with this app, but I'll let you explain it. What is Firework? How to come about? Um, there's any investors in the audience? Um, Open your checkbooks and listen up. No. Uh, so Firework is um a matchmaking platform designed to help brands and athletes connect, um, form dream partnerships and execute sponsorships. Um, mainly focused on the social media space, of course, because it's 2021 and I'm a millennial. Um, but no, there's just so much opportunity here in this space. Um, athletes are the best influencers, no matter how you slice it. Um, yeah. other than maybe, you know, somebody's mom and dad. You know, the, the people they look up to, the posters they throw up on the walls are usually athletes Athletes, there's not too many more there's not too many michael jackson's left in the world or you know know, elvis presley so it's it's fallen on athletes um and even like the non-athletes the drakes of the world who do have that kind of impact Oh, they want to be his athletes. Yes, it, that's, <laughs> you know what I mean? we've seen Drake try to throw hands, <laughs> and then oh my! I mean, he should probably stop, but he wants to be. He can kind of shoot, I think. No, he's can't. Nah, you can't. I've yeah, seen yeah, air yeah, balls yeah, on yeah, live TV, yeah, but anyways, yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but going back to it, man. So, mm-hmm. so Firework basically helps connect brands with athlete influencers. Mm-hmm. How does it all work? Like, what made you want to make an app out of it? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this this came up um december of 2019 so it was after the last season we played because covid knocked out of 2021 um i had three friends reach out to me in the span of like two or three weeks all with the same request one of them was my one of my best friends austin was starting a sunglasses company and actually i'm wearing I'm wearing their beads right now oh cool 2050 um and he was talking <laughs> to me like oh, me and josh are gonna start this thing and yada 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 when it's time for us to go to market and start um advertising like can you connect me with some of your like cfl and nfl friends yeah of course i got you austin no worry. Let me know. We'll make it happen. Great. Not even a week later, I'm back home in London. It was around Christmas. Another guy named Austin. No relation. It's not how names work. Um, reached out to me. <laughs> Called me. Nate, I got something for you. I'm uh, doing this thing. It's Himalayan bath salt crystal things that infuse in your dad. Yeah. He's like, it's perfect for athletes. It's like awesome for restoring and yada, yada. When it's time, he's like, I need some marketing help. Like, I know you kind of get the space. You're savvy. Like, you can connect okay, with some can we can we friends. pause right there? Why? Why? Why you? Why did they come to you? 
Is um, there a reason why they think you're a marketing guy and whatever? Like, um, maybe because I don't shut the hell up. But no, <laughs> no, I think uh, I think just sort of a general like I know people. They know that I know people. Um, I like to think I'm a nice guy. Like people, I'm usually a, a, a yes guy. I'll vouch for you, yeah, bro. I'll, I'll, I'll give that one. To I you. appreciate that. <laughs> I don't usually say no to things. Like I usually want to help people. Um, I think it's kind of just that simple. It's like you know the people in the space. You're, yeah. you're not. I know how to you know tie my shoes and count to two and all that stuff. Um. And so I was, you know, they do, I'd be sort of willing, willing to help. And then, yeah, I got back to Ottawa. Someone was starting a f- clothing line here. Um, someone connected me with them. It was the exact same question. I thought, okay, yeah. we all carry around supercomputers in our pocket. Yeah. Why is nobody else being able to do this? Mm-hmm. Um, looked around, nothing. Uh, nothing worthwhile, at least. Nothing even remotely attacking the problem the right way. Built some surveys, asked some teammates and some people I knew, just some questions about it, how to get deals, some, like, female influencers. I know that's actually how um, I found my the love of my life by the way because I, I sent her a survey this is a true story about Aaron. Oh is that i sent her a survey God. about influencer stuff you slid in with a survey my guy no I well because like we had followed we had followed each other, <laughs> yeah, we knew, she, well she, each she other. knew you and it was and completely then, completely was completely like, completely innocent because i thought that she had a boyfriend i was just like all the sort of female influencers and people i know uh, online um then like it quickly turned into like oh what music do you listen to like, <laughs> started replying to some stories and some emoji faces whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but um classic. so thank you firework but no um <laughs> just yeah i was literally doing research and was just like man everybody wants this and people don't want to just like send off dms because we're also all afraid of rejection we're kind of soft so we're kind of like we, yeah. we wanted to make sure that the, when we're reaching out it's the right time it's the people that want to talk to us etc so exactly that's what we did that's what we built so that's awesome man i really love this story because it, it genuinely came out of like hey like people need this Mm -hmm. i kind of know how to do this Mm -hmm. can i make this a thing Mm -hmm. and so it kind of started off super organically in that sense but what made you want to go and like take that step of making a tech platform because like where do you even start with that you know what i mean like Uh uh-huh um i honestly think and i'll go back to when i was probably like two or three years old or even probably younger than that my mom and my brother used to just they actually by the time I was about 16, they felt like Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein, because they realized they created a monster. Oh, but they were very much like anything I do is going to just be successful. That's what they just told me all the time. And so I remember, I, I think it was just bliss, willful, blissful ignorance of just like, I, why wouldn't I start a tech company? Yeah. But I've seen, I've seen stupider people than me get turned into freaking millionaires. I mean, I mean, that's a very good logic to follow, honestly, yep. like, because it's, it's not, it's facts. Like, yeah. It's, yep. it's so true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, seriously. So I reached out to, um, some people like some people i know work at tech companies just sort of like asking questions around it started pl- plugging away at a business plan um thinking and then guy i played with the university <clears throat> he was a or he still is a shopify he um sort of hr-ish type role but essentially he like manages all the interns and stuff because shopify's got hundreds of interns every semester I said hey dude like this is what i'm thinking like p- most people are suggesting i kind of work with like younger people like right like i don't want to try to find co-founders that are like 40 and have bills because Hey, we're not making money for a long time, let's be honest. So he's like, Yeah, no, you're right. This is pretty normal. Like, people will talk to interns. And I was like, Can you throw something like in a Slack channel for me? He's like, Yeah, sure. He's like, What do you want me to say? I was like, I want you to say exactly this, AJ, that I feel like Tyron Lou, I got a play drawn up that I think is going to work, but I need LeBron James to come execute and put it and, and take this thing home so we can get a chip. And he said, Perfect. Are you serious? I said, No, literally say that. Yeah. He's like, All right. <laughs> okay. And about six or seven interns uh, emailed me. Two of them being Adam and Yan, who who we're still working with, and then yeah, the rest was sort of history. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So so they kind of handled the more tech side of things, and oh, yeah. and while you kind of handled a little bit more of the kind of the sales, the yeah. the marketing, the relationships, the partnerships, that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. That's yeah. really cool, man. Mm-hmm. Because I do think, and I've I'm fully bought in with Firework. If that has been clear already, uh, with us working together and stuff, man, I really do think that um. SAP has insane potential because mm-hmm. it, there's such a gap in the market for it. And I know that's cliche and people say that about every next, you yeah, know, yeah. Oh, this unic- this is about to be a unicorn crazy product. I, th- I actually think that this has insane potential because there's a lot of athletes. Mm-hmm. We're not going to stop having athletes mm-hmm. and a lot of athletes, no offense, suck at marketing. Yes, they do. And they don't want to focus on marketing and, you know, almost like neither should they like almost you know it should be kind of a hands-off approach Mm -hmm. to getting paid for what you love to do and i love your guys tagline of creating dream partnerships where did that all come about um yeah actually we worked with um an incredible 
agency um, based here at Ottawa, actually, Godspeed Communications, um, on some of our rebrand and branding and just touching some things up and things like that. Right, because it wasn't always called Firework. It wasn't firework. always called Firework. I think, I think we got we to gotta spill the beans a bit <laughs> here, Nate. It's on the It's Not That Deep podcast. We go, we talk about it all, Yeah, man. yeah. So we were originally called um, Autonomy, Autonomy Marketing, which in theory makes a lot of sense. The whole idea to start was f agents middle fingers no no agents will be anywhere around this product um, we want to give athletes the autonomy to leave their agents yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm i listen to too much kanye i don't know if you know the line <laughs> all my agents know i hate agents that's kanye oh yeah yeah i Nate know Bar. this yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then i realized you know very quickly some of our advisors that came in were agents and stuff like that and also just that's just not the right way to approach things so right we had to move away from that not only and that, also it was one of those um i don't know if y'all know this trend of like removing letters <laughs> from vowels like, specifically vowels from from a name to make it all trendy and stuff and it was it was at me yeah and for someone like me who's just reading this thing i thought it was like i thought it was anatomy at first yeah, i was like that's what a lot of people do <laughs> it was like anatomy i'm like yeah i guess like what, what are you Athletes, guys yeah. what are you guys like what, what kind of health stuff are you yeah, doing you know it's yeah. like oh we're a tech marketplace for this and that. <laughs> i remember seeing your uh, little website mm -hmm. where you had the white backdrop and stuff mm -hmm. talking about it and i was like this is a really cool concept and like dude i i was fine with the name once i knew what it actually yeah. was but i do think firework sounds a lot better and, yes. I, and and i think that you know it fits everything that you guys are trying to do and like the 150th meeting that i took there were someone was like so atomy or <laughs> a, 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 anatomy yeah, and like, i was I'm like done and I, yeah i was like, I'm just done like with this. yeah I just gave up yeah you're right it's, it's anatomy sure <laughs> whatever man oh man yeah. so but that's been a ride though man it has not been an easy journey balancing mm. being a pro cfl player and a ceo and founder of a tech company let's get into that a little bit man yeah. and talk to me about how just how like <laughs> uh. seeing you operate like i thought i'm a high performing individual who does a lot of things then i see you and like you got a game day on wednesday night <laughs> team meetings all day the next day i don't know how you do it talk mm. to me about that a bit man um I'm definitely burning it at both ends. I definitely wouldn't suggest it. Um, it's been uh, it's been a little crazy. I'm fueled up right now at whatever PM it is <laughs> on coffee that you made. Shouts out Deep Drip um, because it's necessary. Um, I don't know, man. It's like it's it's fun. I often this is like one of those things that if my mom heard me say um she'd roll her eyes and be like i've like you're a monster um but one of the things i usually ask myself before um attempting something or like making a decision is like would somebody would like the average person think they could do this or try it and then if the answer is like no obviously not including you know um life-threatening choices but like if the answer is like no so most people would just think that that's chaotic or impossible or as soon as someone tells you something can't be done then i'm kind of just like hmm that's true. Let's, let's just sure about let's that? just do it then. Yeah, I don't know. Man. Let's see. Like, it's hard, man. Like the hardest thing I think I find, um, it's the it's the switching, the toggling. Like I just who do I have to be in this moment? Uh, yeah, and it's like cutting off. Like one of the things that Coach Lapo, our head coach, always says that I really do value is like you need to be present to perform, which I, I really do try to bring with me into football. Like when I'm in the facility, I try not to answer emails and stuff like that i try not to you know, x y and z and like meetings and stuff like but obviously sometimes it spills but um it's that moment of like okay i just finished therapy just got out of the cold tubs book at home we got a meeting in 15 minutes and that 15 minutes it's like your brain is is it's like it's like a pit stop you know on the nascar at nascar like you're just like all right uh cap tables uh, uh sales and then you're like by the time you get on the call, you're like, oh my God, I'm exhausted. Like, I just like yeah, changed who I am. And then. I've never felt something more. Mobile, yes, dude. dude. Exactly. So I know you know it, what I'm talking the, about. It's the showers. It's it's the car rides. It's those six minutes you have between your mm -hmm. two calls mm -hmm. where it all just comes Rushing hitting in. you at once. And, you're like, and then you just oh. got to flip that switch. And, and one thing, like, I got to say kudos to you, man, is like in all the shoots that we've done and all the content that we've made. You are 100% present in that moment. And that. so you're very good at that, what you just described. Mm -hmm. And and that's not an easy thing to do because, and it's not anyone's fault, but mm -hmm. it's just in an age of social media and yeah. all this stuff, right? Yeah. 
you got your family, your new girlfriend, this, that, like a million things commanding your attention at any given time. Mm-hmm. How do you find focus? So what is what is like actually your strategy then for staying present? Like practically yeah. speaking, yeah. when things start to go crazy, how do you bring yourself back? Um, that is a good question. I wish I had a more defined strategy. I wish I could write a book on this, but I don't know if I have enough i think honestly that's an answer too though man mm-hmm. like if you just don't know and that's just kind of how you've yeah. trained yourself to operate well i think a lot of it comes down to like wanting to be the best at whatever you do mm. um which pretty much every athlete can every athlete and every entrepreneur can how can. you do one thing is how you do everything yeah quote, and yeah. like if i'm you know if i'm at football and it's like time to go and like you know i'm getting ready for practice but like i get a very concerning slack message which happens often or i see an email pop <laughs> Sorry, up bro. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no i get something and i'm like oh good lord um i have to remind myself like uh, hey man like on Saturday, if you drop a pass or if you do this, why then on third, you're going to be so mad at yourself because you're not doing justice to who you are as a football player. So put this out of your mind. Focus for two and a half hours. Um, come back, deal with it, and be Nate, the CEO, in, in, in three hours. Like, just do it because otherwise you're going to hate yourself. Same thing today. Like, I was in the middle of me, like for a four hour gauntlet of Zooms and had like a 15 minute break. And I was like, but I had a bunch of emails. And I was like, I kind of want to just like play a game of chess and like lie down. And I was just like, well, if you don't do it now, it's going to back up and then your company's not going to be successful. And then yeah. all the people who have invested in you are going to be like, where the hell's my money? And then you're going to hate yourself. And then you're going to go down a hole and it's just going to be you and your dog living in the streets. And I'm like, okay, so just don't do it. It's just well, that simple. I, I think, I think you really just did describe how, how, yeah. <laughs> how it works. I guess well, so. Well, well, without realizing it, it's, it's, Hey, like as, as much as it's, you know, I, I don't want to get in if it's a good or a bad thing, but fear is a great motivator. Mm-hmm. And fear in a way of like not realizing your potential mm-hmm. is really something that drives me. Mm-hmm. And it's something that is like I've kept with me and, and I'm I'm not comparing our journeys in mm-hmm. any way, but like in, in a lot of ways I do feel like, like what we're trying to do is not average. Like yeah. and it does require to make some kind of sacrifices and to be to achieve that kind of greatness for people that mm-hmm. have you on a podcast to ask questions like how do you do it all mm-hmm. you got to kind of be a little bit of a nutcase yeah, like you do have sure. to be a little bit of like yeah like what i'm trying to accomplish here like makes no sense and i'm sacrificing sleep and mm-hmm. i just did all that today and had the craziest week and you're here on a friday night shooting a podcast with me in a suburb in ottawa <laughs> you know what i mean like just like it but that's just what kind of creates people who are doing dope mm-hmm. shit mm-hmm. And, but it it comes with its own it comes with its own struggles man and yeah. demons it's it's tough to turn that off i get yeah i i, I think you're absolutely right. i think one of the things i i would say to to anybody um i don't know if my weight word words hold any weight but like i really don't i think i don't think i look at things as sacrifices almost ever um it's yeah. just like it's just a decision like yeah. it's not like sacrifice is such a negative connotation and maybe i've been watching too much ted lasso that i'm gonna make everything like the happiest <laughs> if you haven't seen ted lasso by the way no, no, you should it's it. just perfect is it humor just, just pure, pure positivity type and stuff, but like? also like cussing and like hilarious okay it's I, I, but I, I, it's I, genuinely I, phenomenal I'm gonna take a little bit. yeah please do <laughs> ted lasso is so worth it but um like sacrifice makes it seem like you're giving something up to mm. to get something, but it's like it's there's something about it that I've always just kind of thought is like too negative. Like you're not uh, giving something up to like you're, like you're making a decision to go towards the thing that you want. That's so positive. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like damn. That's why a good say way like to oh I'm you know what I mean? Like I'm I'm taking like oh I'm giving up this McDonald's because I'm not eating sugar this week. Yeah. Like oh what a sacrifice. No, no, you're you're treating your body right so that you can go you know perform and uh, to come uh, it's you yeah. know what i mean it's just that little one of those little twists that like make i think all of it a lot easier to stop like right now um you know we're in the middle of fundraising and there's xyz problems going on with it and it's like instead of being like oh you know this is so hard to do because like xyz not it's like no this is gonna be so fun because like think about how great the auto the biography is gonna be yeah. the, you know the, the book is gonna be about i that's what i always talk, talk with our team about it and, and laugh we're like guys even in four months when we're sitting back at this laughing yeah Think about how funny that's going to be. Like we got through it, and it's it's just a it's just a, a thing on the way there. So um, it speaks to zooming out. out, and I think that's mm-hmm. that's a really important practice as well. Like um, you know, with my business partner and I, Jamie, who you know very well, mm-hmm. and shout out to Jamie, who's actually behind the camera yeah. right now, as he yeah, yeah. pretty much always is. <laughs> uh, but but you know, we have to play this, and you know, we live in the same house together, so we have to like the ups and downs of like building and growing a company mm-hmm. from the ground up. There are going to be times when it's like, 
shit hits the fan and it's just like everything is, that could be going wrong goes wrong murphy's law exactly and you're just kind of sitting there and it's just like yeah man like uh, this is tough but like you know zoom out we're gonna laugh at these problems mm -hmm. like, and he can attest to it like we say it all the time like we're gonna laugh at these problems and then like not to get all woo woo ben but like the universe has weird ways of just turning things around like on a dime yeah you know and and you know not to make a football reference but it's right there man. yeah I so got sometimes you. you gotta you gotta make that you gotta make that pivot you gotta mm -hmm. change your route a bit and like call an audible at the line and things things work out yep and you're kind of just like oh i'm so glad those six doors closed yeah. because now like the one door that we want opening that's gonna lead to x y and z open and like oh wow okay that was that was a blessing in disguise. We kind of dodged a bullet with X client or mm. this, you know, project or, you know, this thing happening or whatever, you know? So mm. I think it's, yeah, I think it's good. It's a good practice to zoom out. Absolutely. All right. So the next thing I want to talk to you about a little bit, bro, is athlete marketing as a mm. whole, man. And why uh, athletes are kind of underutilizing, you know, social media and, and trying to secure brand deals and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean. Oof, this is uh this is an onion there's layers to it um no seriously it's um almost every sponsorship um has social media obligations these days uh you know some of some of our advisors people i work you know closely with agents to represent you know like andre de grasse to you know the, some of the biggest names in canadian and north american sport um, there's contracts that come through nowadays that don't even say like athlete or nba player or whatever it is it just says influencer because that's that's what you know the market is beginning to see athletes as um and the opportunity for athletes is just huge because you don't have to be the best athlete mm. um it obviously helps you know play your best and enjoy your career and like still focus sports is still your your number one right yeah. um but there's such an opportunity to just grow your following organically and we talk about it all the time <laughs> um just like post the things you're doing every day and, and do it and then as you as your um you know as your following and stuff grows it's just the, the opportunities are just gonna roll at, at your feet brands want athletes you know um throwing just some stats into the wind here athletes have a three times better engagement rate um than regular influencers and brands know this i mean if they don't know it yet <laughs> at some point i'm going to be hitting them up through email to tell them so <laughs> yeah. uh your your dream brand is it will be at some point um attacked by me to know the value of who you are as an athlete um sense. yeah man so it's it's really there um there's so many like unique ways to go about it too yeah you know athletes especially once you get to pro but even before that you know you, you do interviews you can be wearing a headband or a hat you do you know you're you're drinking water bottles or whatever, whatever. like there's so many things you're yeah. posting content at you at the you gym. can come on a podcast and hey, wear a particular shirt exactly you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly i'm being sponsored by uh, lauren hill <laughs> no, um but yeah there's just it's, it's such a such a plethora of opportunities that are untapped by so many athletes i genuinely think it's like this sort of fear of putting yourself out there yeah exactly and being judged exactly and, and being uh kind of put in a box of like, oh like what are you doing and mm -hmm. i think we see this a lot on on you know deep social brands obviously we see it with mm -hmm. some of the athletes and stuff in the hockey world right? yeah because it's a big like you don't really want to be too flashy or like talk uh, yeah. too much about yeah. like what you're doing and that have kind of emotions <laughs> yeah, human. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly all exactly. oh, that kind yeah. of stuff their post-game interviews are like uh, one of the funniest oh we just gotta seen. get pucks deep and uh, uh like, just, gotta, uh, a little just, bit gotta, just gotta go out there and you know uh, work hard as a team and uh, just get pucks deep <laughs> and uh you know just gotta uh, just do the best that we can and, yeah you uh, know coach had us coach had us working hard uh <laughs> you know yeah we, uh, we're really playing it's such a useless <laughs> interview I, imagine that being your job like your whole life is just asking Gosh. these guys like yeah how do you think you guys I did know. today anyways yeah, yeah. but going back to it uh, i think a really important um point that you mentioned there is that you don't have to be basically lebron james mm -hmm. and you don't have to try to score a deal with nike for you to create a, a a ton of opportunity just showing behind the scenes of what it's like being a lacrosse player yes. or a competitive swimmer yes or you know it's it's not limited to you know the big three or four or whatever sports you know Absolutely not. and and that's what i think is really cool and like maybe if you want to get into it a little bit for like a young athletes now mm -hmm. what kind of platform should you be kind of using and and how do you start if this is something you purely have not focused on yeah absolutely um ig tiktok you're big you're big too for sure the order of those may flip soon mm. um but ig tiktok <laughs> i would say for sure um uh, with sort of 
you know, a, a respectable third place being YouTube. Okay. Because um, there's enough. third, yep. and there's always place for, you know, different types of content. YouTube obviously is a better place for long form and all that sort of stuff. But um, on IG, TikTok, on the social specifically, like, it's honestly, it sounds so ridiculously cliche, but it's just starting. You know, mm -hmm. your first view, your first reel you put out there, your first TikTok you put out there is going to have 100 views and it's going to be your mom 99 times. That's fine. Yeah. Just get over it and and do it. Yeah. And then don't be afraid to go out there and use the growth hacks that every blogger talks about. Go yeah. comment on some people's stuff that's doing similar stuff to you, that's into the same things. Yeah. Go give them a thumbs up or a fire emoji and yeah. follow them. And they're going to follow you back and they're going to engage with yours. And taking that one step further, yeah. collaborate with them. Yes, exactly. I think we're living in a world now where working together Mm -hmm. is is way way better than being like oh, oh i'm against that guy. yes 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 you know competition as much as it's it's vital to sport and i mm -hmm. think it's very important i think outside and off the field yeah it's all about collaboration it's yeah. all about let's let's grow this thing together yeah. how can we like this is essentially what we're doing here right mm -hmm. now on this podcast right you and i are kind of leveraging each other's kind of brands mm -hmm. and audiences mm -hmm. and stuff to put out content that hopefully people are going to get some value from yeah. i hope i don't know yeah it's not that deep <laughs> yeah. i'm just here talking shit but i mean what nate's saying is pretty cool uh but yeah going back to it man again huge opportunity i think what you know a really interesting thing is that you know you're someone who um uh, it's not just not just saying this stuff and like just to promote his own app you're mm -hmm. actually doing it and yeah. you know we obviously know that because we we do your content yep. we do the your tiktoks and and your reels kind of the behind the scenes stuff and mm -hmm. it's really cool to see how that's already starting to grow yeah. a legitimate audience that otherwise you know maybe what might not know who you are no. i might go so far it's, as to it's, say that it's crazy no you're absolutely yeah. right i mean you know people that uh Especially, you know, in in what's definitely a niche market in the CFL, you know, um, some dedicated fans and, and things like that that have, that have sort of found the what I think they they see as a valuable little nugget in in what the, in the content we're creating. Like, well, dude, we'll we'll see it, and we might edit in a few comments here, mm -hmm. but like like the people who are commenting and yeah. engaging with your post, a they want a lot more. Yeah. B they're kind of upset that not more players in the CFL are doing this, mm -hmm. and then C it's like look. TikTok as a whole is kind of just like slept on by most pro athletes, yes. right? Yeah. You see some NFL, you see the Juju's and, mm -hmm. and people starting to use it and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But overall, it's so early in the yeah. game. So yeah. I, I think that's a really good tip. Get on, get on, get your IG game up, get your mm -hmm. TikTok, use the reel, start using these things. And it doesn't have to be corny, man. That's what I was about to say is you don't need, you use Juju as an example and all power to Juju. But you don't need to be doing the Corvette dance on midfield to like be you a don't. TikTok. Like it can be as simple as you holding your phone. Like one of the things that we've done and experimented with that's worked really well is literally just responding to people's comments. Instead of <laughs> yeah. just DMing them back, I'm just saying them publicly publicly to for a camera. more people to kinda kind of connect yeah. with. And people love that because you know, whether you're the biggest athlete, you know, uh in junior A in your city or, you know, the biggest athlete on your um university team, or you're some pro the Hall of Famer, like there's people that look up to you and there's people that want to know that stuff. They're just like, yeah. oh, that's so cool that the, your favorite place to play is BC Place or, or your favorite place to play is, you know, uh, whatever the heck, McGill Stadium. I think it's yeah. called McGill Stadium. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They legit um, play there. Yeah, but they like they like that stuff and it's that's for every athlete, you know? Um, and if they don't like that stuff or they don't care about that, get better at making the content, but also get yourself in the gym and be a little bit better at your sport. And then yeah. they're going to work hand in hand because eventually someone's going to be like, this is pretty cool and this person's pretty darn good with it. And to get a little meta with it, you could document your journey mm. of getting better at your sport and then, oh. <laughs> then you can show people that journey of that before and after. Who yeah. doesn't like a good before and after kind of photo, video, Absolutely. anything? Shouts out to our guy Sohail, by the way, in, oh. in Madrid, who did it better than anybody. Big awesome. shout out, man. Yeah. And yeah. and it's like, I love that about this content world and mm -hmm. stuff. And, I, you know, just pros and cons to everything, yep. right? But I think that's one of the biggest um, opportunities for athletes and the next thing I kind of want to talk about is brands. And mm -hmm. I know we kind of touched on it before. And, you know, it, it's definitely, I, I love Firework for this because it's marrying the two, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, from a brand standpoint, you know, you now as a business owner, why don't you talk about like what the opportunity is for brands working with athletes a bit more? I know you mentioned kind of the engagement yeah. thing with influencers and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. we've seen an explosion of how that's, that's, that's resulted in a lot of influencer partnerships and, mm -hmm. and, you know, 
IG booty models and this, that, <laughs> and the other thing. But, you know, how does that relate to athletes working yes. with brands? Yeah, absolutely. Um, brands are realizing that, well, here's here's the natural progression of things, if you think about it. Um, social media starts. Um, people who didn't, don't do a whole lot of a lot start to get famous for whatever reason, whether it's the IG models you speak of or, or, who, or what have you. Um, they start shilling products. People are buying them at first, and then they keep shilling products. People are going, okay, this is just all they do is show products. Athletes have followings because they're doing something in the real world that people are paying attention to. Um, athletes speak about a product because hopefully, usually, if it's a dream partnership, uh, it's a product that they genuinely use. You know, I'm if, as an athlete, I'm not going to be out there. I mean, McDonald's, you can hit me if you want. I'm going to take, <laughs> take a little cash, but I shouldn't, I'm likely not out there shilling McDonald's. I do eat McDonald's. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, there's, yeah. and so when I'm talking about BioSteel, or I'm talking about this crazy uh, Stoko K1 compression tights that help to stabilize your knee and stuff. It's not me just shilling a product. It's me saying, hey, look, here's a brand that I already wear and work with. They see the value in working with me and promoting this. Um, but this isn't out of my realm of what I, I'm already doing during my day. Yeah. And brands understand that that is important. That uh, it's authenticity is what it is. And it's not authentic when, IG model 737 is promoting the sixth pair of workout tights with, you know, jawstrings that make your booty look bigger that, that, that they promoted this week. They had one on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday yeah. and Thursday. That's not authentic. They're just, they clearly got it. But when yeah. an athlete is saying, no, no, look, this is my one brand partner in this category and a category that I use every single day. It's the exact same as musicians when they're promoting Fender. Yeah. You, if, if they're getting paid by Fender, it's because they, they play a Stratocaster. Mm -hmm. It's because they, play a Stratocaster like Jimi Hendrix, exactly. they turn that thing upside down and they make that thing, they make this thing whine. <laughs> exactly. It's the exact same thing with athletes and there's that authenticity can't be replicated or uh, made anywhere else. It makes so much sense in me as someone like, I think I, I'm so influenced by people who I look up to mm -hmm. and what, what they're promoting and actually what they use. And mm -hmm. like, I think most people are, whether you want to admit it yeah. or not. Right? <laughs>